Good evening, everyone. My name is Shavika. Uh, today's webinar is brought to you by Varthana. Today's webinar topic is Create Tomorrow's Leader, Holistic Development Strategies Revealed. Uh, so uh, currently we are focusing a theme that is school development and growth. Uh, earlier we have covered a theme on 21st century uh, leadership and uh, 21st century skill. So, so far we have uh, covered uh, uh, sessions on why self-evaluation is important for school growth, uh, the school growth uh, blueprint marketing strategies and uh, in uh, near future also we'll be covering more topics uh, that is on budgeting and resource allocation. Please still uh, stay tuned uh, to Varthana and attend these webinar. Uh, also, we'll be sharing the webinar participation certificate for today's webinar. So please ensure that you're filling the uh, feedback form towards the end. Then only we'll be able to issue you the participant certificate. So let's start with today's agenda, what we'll be covering today. So today's agenda will start with introduction and session objective, followed by uh, traditional versus uh, uh, 21st century uh, schools or holistic development important strategies to promote holistic development roles and uh, role of lab and technology integration uh, we have mr dikshit with us today uh, from uh, like uh, one of our uh, external partner so uh, he'll be uh, co-hosting the webinar with me today followed by feedback and closing so let's start with a quick round of introduction for introduction i'll be launching a poll to understand the participant profile I have launched the poll. Please uh, go and select your profile and vote. I'm going to keep it open for 15 to 20 seconds. Thank you. 50% uh, of the uh, people who, who we have today are uh, school leaders and principal and 50% are teachers. Hope this webinar adds value. I request everyone to make this webinar as interactive as possible. For that, you have to raise your hand. Uh, please do that. Uh, so let's uh, see what is today's objective. Today's objective will understand traditional versus 21st century classroom with a focus on holistic development or holistic education. We'll also be covering the strategies to promote holistic education and lab a uh, role of lab and technology in providing uh, holistic education. So let's start with uh, what is a uh, 21st century classroom or what is holistic classroom? So it's a multidisciplinary approach, which is proposed by NEV 2020, though it was also there, but there's a lot of emphasis, which is given on uh, it by uh, uh, NEP or uh, national education policy. Uh, so to include more and more technology, uh, methodology and uh, more of a collaboration to teach student in best possible way. Some of the elements of holistic classroom is uh, there's a lot of emphasis on collaborative learning, critical thinking, indulging student in uh, doing activities which uh, they themselves indulge and become more of a self learner because uh, self learning uh, is going to be future. Uh, it is uh, right now and uh, it's a it's something which is uh, there for the uh, lifelong with the students so it's important to uh, like uh, focus on it also a lot of emphasis was, uh, is given on flexibility and personalized learning what we are doing in schools right now is more of standardized teaching and learning so it's important to start understanding individual needs and cater them accordingly adoption of experiential learning though we try to adopt experiential learning through activities and bits and pieces but it's still not part of our curriculum so it's important to start adopting and integrating it in day-to-day -day, uh, schooling and uh, 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 sorry uh, an integration of technology as well uh, because that's what we have seen that uh, like education in india is also moving towards digital era we all are moving towards the digital era and a hybrid model as uh, as our current and is going to be there in future also so these are some of the elements which we need to start including in our classroom uh, to make it ready for 21st century skill. And then we propose uh, different pedagogies and uh, different approaches to adopt uh, experiential learning uh, at different level. So there's a lot of emphasis uh, which is given to this. Let's see what's the difference between what uh, we have been doing so far and what is something which we need to focus on uh, in our school or in classroom. So earlier the focus was more on rote learning uh, and uh, as I mentioned that more on standardized, uh, standardized teaching. But now we need to uh, focus more on personalized learning, catering the student uh, need or learning style and uh, make them independent learner. 
uh, there's a lot of uh, technology integration which is required earlier the method was more of chalk and talk and only delivering the content uh, through book uh, and uh, or teaching through assessment but now uh, there's a lot focus on hybrid model technology integration uh, providing video resources to teach them effectively and it's also through a lot of researches it's evident that teacher uh, student lo learn more when they are interacted uh, or uh, they are indulged in using multiple senses so that is also there teaching style and assessment earlier it was more teacher centric whatever teacher knows uh, used to deliver that uh, but uh, now it's more of student centric there's a lot of content and uh, data available out there a lot of information is available out there what we need to uh, focus on uh, uh, is on uh, skill development uh, which is going to be there uh, for the lifetime uh, the learning environment is also shifting uh, earlier the uh, priority was uh, to score good marks but now it's more into uh, the priority is to more uh, be uh, this uh, uh, leadership uh, to develop the leadership style or to have more creative approach uh, problem solving uh, approach uh, so these are uh, the shift in uh, approach uh, which has started shifting so this is just a, a brief let's see that why it's important so i think this is uh, something which we all are aware that the holistic classroom enhance the engagement enhance the skill development uh, especially the language and communication skill development along with uh, uh, collaboration and teamwork it uh, develops the 21st century skill which is quite crucial and improves the quality education uh, and uh, quality of education, which is also part of sustainable development goal. Uh, so far, what we are doing uh, is knowing something. Now it's time to start implementing uh, the knowledge and uh, focus more on uh, applying what you know. Uh, the focus is also on uh, development of socio-emotional. Uh, so earlier after COVID, I think this is the uh, need which we all started paying attention to and sort of realize that needs attention. Uh, is uh, the uh, emotional health of a student, emotional well-being, but also emotional intelligence helps to perform better in teamwork or in job role. So we need to start preparing these students for future and uh, a holistic uh, classroom sort of cater these needs. Also prepare for dynamic work environment as we are living in a world which is fast moving, fast changing. It's a tech savvy world. Uh, and we need to start, uh, uh, we need to be very flexible and adaptive in nature. So a holistic classroom supports uh, a student to be prepared for a dynamic work environment in future. So these are some of the importance uh, of holistic classroom. So let's discuss that. Uh, we have seen that uh, it, it is important to have a holistic classroom. It's important to uh, learn certain skills. So I like to hear from everyone that what are some of the strategies you are using to develop these holistic learning in the classroom? As we have discussed that it's important to do it. How you're doing it in your school? What are the strategies you're using in your school? So if anyone wants to share, uh, please uh, raise a hand or you can put it in Q&A section. I'll uh, take the responses from there as well. I'm sure we all are doing some sort of holistic uh, uh, development intervention in schools. So if anyone wants to share, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, so some strategies to develop holistic learning in the classroom, uh, the basic strategy is to uh, include uh, experiential uh, based learning that is uh, putting a lot of emphasis on experiential learning. And uh, these are like uh, this is like some of these are some of the strategies to promote holistic development uh, to include more and more experiences through debate discussion, through case studies, including student uh, into case studies. Uh, sometimes in self-evaluation, sometimes uh, by doing a project-based learning. So uh, one of the way to develop a uh, uh, holistic, uh, like uh, uh, one of the way to uh, make a holistic classroom is enhance uh, and uh, increase and include more and more experiential learning within the classroom. So uh, these are a few things which can be done. It's also important to create community in the classroom. Uh, how this can be created by maybe creating a small book club, uh, maybe doing classroom celebration, doing class time activities, uh, doing small meetings uh, with the student, giving them group work and project work that help them to interact and develop uh, other skills like uh, communication skill, collaboration skill, creative thinking. So to cater these skills, uh, uh, it's important to indulge uh, 
student and uh, community uh, set up and uh, provide them space to do that. It's also important to include students in a lot of self-guided activities to ensure that the learning is happening. Uh, maybe again, uh, giving a task which they can do independently because uh, the uh, kid also feel a lot of uh, motivation and confidence when they achieve a task independently. Uh, so some of the example of uh, self-guided activities can be giving them a research project, giving them a uh, uh, giving them work to write an article or blog or uh, journal something or uh, create a project and deliver. So these can be some of the ways to uh, uh, give them uh, self-guided uh, activities to students to cater their individual learn and also push them to do and be a self-learner. Uh, other things which can be done as STEM-related activities to do at home, uh, tasks which a student is uh, performing uh, individually. And the other way uh, or the strategy is to integrate lesson for enhancing learning outcome. So teaching uh, or covering topics, different topics together. So for example, I can teach soil uh, and science as well as geography. So how you can uh, bring uh, different subjects and topics together to teach a subject. For example, uh, I can teach uh, baking as part of uh, or as well as chemistry, like how the things are getting fermented. So uh, it's important to start uh, bringing that uh, intersectionality in subjects and start teaching them because it gives the broader perspective to understand and comprehend a topic and remember it for uh, remember it for a longer duration. So these are some of the strategies. Again, uh, not uh, deep diving too much into it. Uh, some of the activities to engage in these strategies or to cater these strategies is experiment, uh, experiments, doing experiments, field visits and trips, art projects, uh, open discussion and debates. Uh, There's a list of activities which we can find uh, and uh, do. Uh, but uh, the NEP is also talking a lot about experiential learning and uh, building a holistic classroom. The emphasis is clearly on uh, uh, adapting uh, experiential learning at different stages across all syllabus and including a lot of hands-on learning approaches. So uh, this is there. So I would like to hear it from you. Like uh, so far we have discussed that it's important. Uh, we have seen that uh, what are some of the strategies to uh, cater these experiential learning or uh, to build a holistic classroom. Uh, let's discuss that how you're catering experiential learning in your school. As you have seen that these are the methods and ways to do it. I would like to hear from you that what you are doing in your school to cater the experiential learning. Do you have any setup? Okay, someone shared uh, TLM using smart class also using. Okay, thank you. I think uh, that is using TLM uh, and a smart class uh, as a technology integration and material uh, integration. Uh, so it's one of the, uh, that's uh, correct. Anyone else wants to share? that how you're catering uh, experiential learning in your school. So I'll uh, move on and say uh, that as we have discussed uh, that it's experiential uh, learning is important and some of the uh, ways to cater uh, is the strategies which we have discussed. And there are other things also, but one of the effective way is to have a lab in the school. Uh, to do an experiment. And earlier when we used to think about lab, we only used to think about science lab. But right now, NEP is proposing and also uh, like uh, government and education uh, bodies, they are recommending that it's important to every school needs to have a lab, lab set up uh, there. And it caters the experiential learning in best possible way in a short duration. Because one of the challenges of experiential learning is to uh, have a proper lesson plan, resources implemented uh, and the time duration. So lab provides that set of resources and lesson plan to implement it. So let's move on and see that what is the role of lab and technology in uh, uh, technology integration and experiential learning. So uh, we have uh, our guest speaker with us today, uh, Mr. Anurag Dixit. He has experience of over 35 years in education training and hospitality industry. Uh, he has headed multiple business uh, and leaded uh, education companies like NID, Educom, uh, coffee uh, day group etc as part of his international project he has successfully set up id training center overseas as a head sales operation uh, sales and operations he leads a passionate team of sales marketing operations and customer relationship professions at national smart learning solutions uh, he handles pan india 
Uh, so I welcome uh, Mr. Dikshit uh, to uh, take you uh, through the webinar from here. Over to you, sir. For the very crisp introduction to the presentation, I hope all of you can hear me. <clears throat> so, uh, so you have very crisp. Uh, you given a very crisp introduction to labs and how labs are important. Uh, so, I'll take it on from here onwards, and uh, we'll focus more on the roles of labs as well as experiential learning, on how it can benefit the teaching learning process. It can help teachers teach effectively, and it can help students learn in a very, very very fun-filled manner uh, whereby they learn with doing activities so that they can't forget. So now coming straight to the point, uh, scientific research says that human beings learn 40 to 60 percent through listening, auditory method of learning through listening. So that's about 40 to 60 percent. And they learn through visual mode of learning, which is the videos or movies, etc. That is approximately 60 to 80 percent. However, the most effective method of learning as per research is learning by doing or learning through activities or experiential learning, kinesthetic learning, Montessori method of learning, whatever name you want to call it, which is about 80 to 100 percent. And the most, uh, I mean, the big, uh, the most simple example that I love to give to customers and to students and to teachers, etc., is that if I have to explain how to ride a bicycle to you, it it is very easy for me to tell you how to ride a bicycle. Even if I show you a video or a movie on somebody riding a bicycle, it appears very, very simple. However, if we remember our childhood days when we learned how to ride a bicycle, we all know that it was not so easy. We fell many times. We hurt ourselves. Sometimes blood also came out and then we learned how to ride a bicycle. But having learned a bicycle, how to ride it in our school days, I think I have not ridden a bicycle maybe for 20 or 25 years. But I know if there is one bicycle standing outside, I can just take it up and start riding it. And I have not forgotten how to ride a bicycle even till now because I learned it through experiential learning. Similarly, if you are sitting in the front seat of a car and you are driving on your own, or if you are sitting in the back seat of a car, if you're sitting in the back seat and you are driving to a new route, to a new road, an area which you do not know, it is very difficult for you to remember the area. However, if you are in the front seat or if you are on the driver's seat, it is very easy for you to remember the route and you don't forget it easily. So experiential learning is something which is most effective. Moving on to the next slide. So role of lab and te technology integration. I'll request Shivika to please uh, move the presentation to the next one. Thank you so much. So a role of uh, lab and technology integra integration, a uh, good old days, maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, lab was only in isolation. It did not have so much of technology being integrated. But today's technology has got integrated into lab. We can use technology for conceptualizing different ideas, which was not so easy earlier. Uh, labs today contain advanced equipment, simulations, activities. There's a lot of practical involvement, and it makes teaching for the teachers, very, very effortless. So during the course of our presentation, I'll also tell you how a teacher's life can become much more simpler. Because today, a teacher has involved in it so many activities to be implemented at the school. Sometimes many teachers feel that they are being overburdened. However, I strongly feel that technology integration can make a teacher's life very, very simple. Give enough time for the teacher to focus on academics rather than administrative activities in teaching. We'll move on to the next slide now. <clears throat> Uh, now, we'll talk about some of the academic challenges that uh, uh, schools usually face when they are setting up a traditional lab. So when you set up a tra traditional lab, what are the kind of challenges that you face at a school level? First and foremost is that whenever you have to set up any lab, and generally schools nowadays, specifically if we talk of CBSE schools or international curriculum schools, they have a physics lab, chemistry lab, a biology lab. And most of them nowadays have also started setting up a math lab. So these four different labs means you need space for setting up these labs. You need a dedicated room, approximately 800 square feet, 500 square feet, 1,000 square feet, depending on the size of the school. So there's a whole lot of real estate space which is coming at a premium, uh, which is to be dedicated for labs. Second is time constraint. 
uh, students do theory in the classroom they come to the lab now through timetabling normally a school is not able to devote more than once a week or maybe sometimes once a fortnight for each of these labs normally schools give two periods uh, consecutively 40 40 minutes to two periods consecutively for physics lab chemistry lab biology lab and math lab so that's a very little time which is being given third challenge is portable a separate room students have to come to that room from the classroom so time is wasted in coming and going to the lab also and lab cannot come inside the classroom students have to come to the lab next challenge is resource availability for example if you have 30 children in a section in a classroom now all 30 there is never enough equipment available in the lab for all 30 to do experiments in a dedicated manner so students have to form groups, groups of five, groups of six, and they do uh, one particular concept or one particular activity, one particular experiment in the lab. So no student can ever get an opportunity to doing all the practicals, all the activities in the laboratory. That's another challenge. There is a very high level of dependency on the lab assistant or the lab teacher. So the teacher who has taught theory in the classroom that teacher has to depend on the lab assistant for performing the practicals in the lab if the lab assistant is absent that day or if the lab assistant has not been able to set up the lab equipment it is virtually impossible for the teacher to perform the experiments for the students so that is one more challenge then there is a time lag in the teaching and learning process what does this mean for example if the teacher in the classroom has taught the concept in theory on monday and now for practical the lab is scheduled on a Friday. So there is already a time lag of four days in theory versus practical. Theory was attended on Monday. Practical is on Friday. So sometimes students will tend to forget the concepts taught in the theory. Then the next challenge is low practical understanding because students are not able to do all the, they are not able to practice all the concepts in the practical class in the laboratory. So therefore there is a low level of understanding as far as practicals are concerned. The material consumption, material consumption because in lab equipment is of a very large scale, large size. So consumption of material is also very, very high. For example, in chemistry, the chemicals, etc., that you're using, if you have a test tube of 200 ml or 100 ml, and you are using say 50 ml of chemical. So um, material consumption is quite high uh, whereas if the material consumption is low still you can get the same level of result you can get the same effectiveness if, even with using less chemicals affordability and cost because you are setting up a lab on a very large scale you are using large items you are using more uh, chemicals etc so obviously the cost will be higher typically setting up a lab in a school, a physics lab or a chemistry lab costs anywhere between 15 to 20 lakhs. So that's a quite high cost. There are much more innovative methods in which labs can be set up using much, much lesser cost. Material consumption and wastage we have already covered. Procurement challenges, no lab equipment can be so from a single vendor. So for example, if you have to set up a math lab or a physics lab in a school, you have to connect with multiple vendors to source equipment. Maybe microscope is coming from some other vendor. The uh, chemicals are coming from some other vendor. Acids are coming from some other vendor. So you have to have challenges of procurement. Orientation training and handholding. This I believe is a very strong point which is lacking in schools. Teachers and lab assistants, they do not do not undergo any formal structured training, orientation, handholding, etc. So they use their own knowledge to teach students in the lab, to make students do experiments, etc. Proceeding to the next slide. Now we'll talk about the Nischel's labs and how these labs are designed to overcome some of the challenges that we have discussed in the previous slide. So we'll move to the next slide and we'll speak about Nischel's lab. So this first slide, I'm going to talk briefly about Nischel's. So Nischel's Smart Learning Solutions is an organization and we started about 12, 13 years ago. Uh, we are, uh, our organization is basically aimed at uh, building higher literacy and enhancing academic excellence. We believe in experiential learning and all our solutions are designed for experience. Learning or learning by doing. So we strongly believe that 
scientific research the way it says that human beings learn most through learning by doing activities we have focused all, all our products and solutions on the same approach of learning by doing we are working towards simplifying the education system and making learning a fun so rather than giving stress to students we want them to enjoy the learning process and have fun while they are learning our vision is to be the most preferred and trusted global player and education partner for schools uh, our mission is to provide innovative educational concepts and products that can help children children learn in a stress free environment so that's broadly what our aim and objective is we'll move to the next slide and start getting into the lab content so before we get into the lab part one more slide briefly about our organization and about our founder mentor director nishchal narayanam so nishchal's our organization nishchal smart learning education is empaneled through ncert and all our books etc which we publish are NC, ncert affiliated so schools do not have to worry about adopting our curriculum and our books etc we are a iso 9001 certified organization we have a mission to provide educational innovative educational products uh, we have a team which is highly passionate about what we are doing and they innovate for excellence they innovate for product development we offer a very wide range of academic products and solutions uh, mainly focusing on maths and science but in the last couple of years we have diversified into english as well as social studies and now we are trying to create content in vernacular languages as well uh, in nutshell we are trying to make competent confident and caring individuals both at the teacher level and at the student level briefly speaking about about our founder mentor director nishal nar Nam, you can see see snapshot. He is a very young professional, just about twenty seven years of age. When he started this company, he was just about fourteen fifteen years old, and he has to his credit some of the wonderful accolades which I'll highlight share with you just now. So he's the youngest double Guinness Book World Record holder. He is a memory champion, world record holder in the space of memory, and the first time he entered Guinness Book was at the age of thirteen. He has been recognized as one of the seven. most brilliant brains in the world this accreditation was given to him by the national geographic channel he is the youngest recipient of the asian education leadership award in uh, dubai in nine, in 2015 uh, he is the youngest chartered accountant of india at the age of 19 he is the youngest post graduate of india again at the age of 19 he is the youngest graduate at the age of 17 he has authored several books in in maths uh, at the age of 9 and 10 and these books uh, incidentally i must mention here are very popular with students because nishchal when he wrote these books he was neither a teacher nor was he a author he was a student and he has been able to relate very well to students in these books uh, he is a young philanthropist and a promoter of literacy through the nishchal foundation so we have a nishchal foundation which aims at uh, uh developing programs and offering them to children who are from the lower and less privileged strata of the society so let's move to the next slide <clears throat> okay so this slide talks about our unique portable micro scale 3d interactive labs with digital content which is a very very cost effective solution uh and can be set up practically in one tenth of the cost of what a traditional lab will require or uh, we have concepts and uh, innovations which are revolution revolutionizing the classroom teaching and learning practices uh, all our solutions are very very comprehensive and they inculcate activity based learning and they are all in sync in line with the school curriculum so with the cbse curriculum or the state board curriculum we make it a point to develop solutions which are in line with the curriculum so that teachers don't face any challenges while teaching these concepts to the students and uh, our hands on methodology sharpens the minds of students increases their mental agility logic reasoning ability intelligence etc so uh, this helps students to learn in a very joyful manner <coughs> we go to the next slide <coughs> so nishchal portable micro scale labs that's our first product or first solution we'll talk about it in a little more detail so the, the labs which we have there are four labs maths physics chemistry biology maths and science math lab is meant for students from the age group 4 onwards 
and uh, if i talk in terms of classes from class 1 to 10 uh, the total lab for class 1 to 10 has concepts of of more than 1200 concepts of the curriculum which are covered so 1200 concepts class 1 to 10 means 10 classes so approximately if you do an average 120 concepts being covered in each class the photograph that you are seeing at in the bang in the center of the photograph you are finding a cabinet this cabinet is the lab which you will be getting it's a stainless steel cabinet about 3 feet in height and 3 feet in width so 3 feet by 3 feet 9 square feet is the size of this cabinet it has two doors in the front which are lockable it has a drawer on top of the doors which has a uh, space to keep the uh, material inside and it has got four wheels at the bottom so it's a portable lab on a trolley it can move it can be taken inside the classroom and requires just 9 square feet of space so in one little corner in the room in the classroom or in the staff room or in the library or wherever you want you can keep it in the school premises in one little corner 9 square feet of space and on both sides of the lab you are finding some little boxes and equipment which have been kept some books manuals dvds etc so all, all this equipment pertaining to the math lab will fit inside the cabinet so when we will deliver this lab to a school we will be delivering this cabinet and when you open the cabinet you can spread out the lab equipment and each of these boxes is for some particular concept for example there will be one box for uh, algebra so it will have material related to algebra and uh, teachers can use that material to teach algebra concepts to students another box could be pertaining to trigonometry another box could be pertaining to geometry and stuff like that so all this equipment will fit inside the cabinet and teachers will use this equipment uh, for demonstrating the various concepts to students uh, in the classroom itself lab comes in inside the classroom so typically imagine a 40 minute period teacher can teach 30 minutes of theory and at the end the last 10 or 15 minutes teacher can involve students and demonstrate the concepts using practical uh, tools or uh, practical items activities experiments so some of the complex and abstract uh, subjects for example let's say if you have to demonstrate a cube or a cuboid or a pyramid or a cylinder in the classroom it is very difficult because these are 3d concepts and using a blackboard or a whiteboard etc it's difficult to explain a 3d concept using 2d items or 2d technology but with this lab you can easily demonstrate these concepts to the students at the end of the uh, theory session so teacher has the ability to perform activities and experiments within the classroom on the teacher's table involving the students uh, in the classroom itself so that's math lab we move to the next slide which is physics lab math lab if you would have seen the, just now if you recall it was in red color physics is in blue color don't worry about the colors colors have just been uh, given for a differentiation so that we can easily identify which lab is math lab and which item is for physics lab and so on otherwise it has no particular significance now science labs are for classes from 6 to 10 while math lab was for class 1 to 10 with about 1200 concepts being taught physics lab is for 6 to 10 with about 450 plus concepts which will be taught to students so approximately uh, it will have about 90 concepts per class five classes 6 7 8 9 10 450 concepts so about 90 concepts per class and similarly it is in the form of the same kind of cabinet with two lockable doors drawer and wheels at the bottom and you are seeing all these experiment kits which have been spread out so there will be one box which will be the light kit one box which is sound kit one box which is electricity another box electromagnetism and so on and so forth and it comes along with the teachers manuals i'll explain about the manuals in a little while plus it also comes with the videos in the form of dvds etc in case if a school requests us for not giving dvds they want in a pen drive or in a hard drive we can even do that so approximately 450 plus concepts in the physics lab and it is also portable it can be rolled inside the class classroom 3 by 3 size 9 square feet so it also fits into a little corner inside the classroom we move to the next lab which is the chemistry lab next slide <coughs> chemistry lab is in a yellow color Uh, in the presentation sometimes the colors do not get reproduced uh, uh, correctly 
So uh, chemistry lab is in yellow color and over 470 concepts can be explained to students from class 6 to class 10. Five classes, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, more than 470 concepts. Again, similar concept of a cabinet, all the equipment fitting inside the cabinet. However, you can lay it outside also. So 450, 70 concepts can be covered. And every year we are adding more and more concepts. In fact, I'll be uh, very happy to share with you that uh, the updation of these labs, the content being added to the labs is many a times being contributed by teachers from various schools across the country. They su suggest to us what more concepts can be demonstrated using the same equipment and uh, material which have been provided to the schools. So that's chemistry lab. We move on to the next slide, which is the biology lab. Biology lab is in green color. More more than 400 concepts can be demonstrated to students from classes 6 up to classes 10. So about 80 to 90 concepts per class can be demonstrated to students from class 6 to class 10. Uh, same kind of a cabinet is there in green color with two doors, drawer and uh, wheels at the bottom and all the equipment etc can fit inside this cabinet. This biology lab also comes along with two microscopes. The traditional simple microscope and a dissection microscope all that is also provided as part of the lab we uh, now the since we've covered all the four labs i'll summarize uh, the lab part again over 2500 concepts in all the four subjects from class 1 to 10 can be demonstrated by the teacher using these lab equipment within the classroom itself each of these labs comes with a lab manual so for example if i am uh, if i have I'm a school which has purchased our biology lab. So I'll be getting along with the biology lab five manuals, one for class six, one for class seven, one for class eight, similarly for ninth and tenth. In the manual, step-by-step -step processes and uh, items will be listed and the way the activity has to be performed will be mentioned there. So teachers can read the manual and they they can learn how to perform the lab activities. In addition to that, there will be DVDs with videos of teachers performing activities in a classroom. So in case if a teacher is not able to understand anything from the uh, uh, lab manual, teacher can see the video and she can learn how to perform the activity. In addition to pro providing these lab manuals and DVDs, etc., videos, uh, etc., whenever we supply a lab to a school, we also undertake a physical training at the school premises, at the school campus. Our trainers will come to your school and they will teach your teachers. They will train your teachers on how to use these activity kits and how to use the lab for performing exper experiments and activities and how to enhance the learning ability of students. In addition to this, every quarter there is a refresher training which is generally done online. And through this online training, we do a refresher training, recapitulation of the training which was given initially so that any points that the teachers may have forgotten can be refreshed in their memory. Apart from all these training services which we are providing, for three years we support you. So whenever we sell a lab to a school, our support services will be available to the school for a period of three years. Handholding, etc. will be there for three years. Anytime, anywhere you get stuck, our services will be available to you for supporting the teachers of the school. Now, apart from the training services, either at the school premises or the online refresher training, there are another five methods in which you can get in touch with our people. There is a toll-free number which will be given to you. So anytime a teacher has a problem, teacher can use the toll-free number, dial on the toll-free number and take help from our uh, trainers here. Second is an email facility. Third is a messaging facility, an SMS message. Fourth is chat and fifth is WhatsApp. So these five mechanisms are there in which you can take support services from our people. And of course, we do visit once a quarter to the school to provide our support services and to review the progress of how the lab is being used effectively and how students are benefiting. All that is done on a quarterly basis. We'll move to the next slide. We have spoken about the labs. Now, labs were meant for the teacher to demonstrate activities and experiments and concepts to students. 
in addition to that we have got class wise student kits so we have a math kit for every class classes 1 to 10 there are 10 different math kits and we have five science kits for class 6 up to class 10 science kits are common they have all the three subjects in one kit itself physics chemistry and biology all three subjects so students can buy these kits and take them home or sometimes school buys the kits and provides them in the classroom or in the library in the school itself and uh, in this case students can't take the kids home but they can practice they can do the experiments they can do the activities they can learn and keep the kit back in the school premises itself so after the teacher has demonstrated the concept in the classroom students can use the kits and they can practice in the school using the student kits so that's about student kits we'll move to the next program now that was briefly about our micro scale portable labs so as the name suggests since these are micro scale and they are portable uh, they are, the cost is very very low briefly we will talk about a comparative analysis in the next slide let's go to the next slide we will compare a traditional lab versus a nischal lab so there are about 10 12 parameters which we will cover here so if you see this table so the first one first parameter is space so in a traditional lab even in the smallest of labs in a school in a small school you need a room approximately 300 to 500 square feet whereas a nischal lab requires just 9 square feet the traditional lab in a school is not portable students have to come to the lab through time tabling through scheduling whereas a nischal lab is portable it can come inside the classroom it can be taken to the playground it can be taken to the auditorium it can be taken to your uh, activity hall it can be taken to the hostel and teachers can demonstrate concepts wherever the lab is taken in a traditional lab normally students get once a week uh, as a uh, opportunity to go to the lab and practice sometimes once a fortnight whereas in the case of nischals every single period which is covered by the teacher in that lab can be used and activities and experiments can be used for explaining concepts teaching learning time lag so uh, in a traditional school environment if a theory concept has been taught on let's say monday and the practical is scheduled on friday or saturday or thursday there is a time lag between teaching theory and teaching uh, practical and practicing in the practical in our case it happens simultaneously in the same period theory as well as practice session with the practical is happening practical understanding in a traditional lab is relatively low in our case it is very high because students are also using student kits to practice affordability in terms of cost a traditional lab like i mentioned requires 15 to 20 lakh investment in our case the investment is very very low almost one tenth of what it is required it is required in the case of a traditional lab in a normal school many a times we find that science labs are there but math lab is not present in the school however in our case we have all the four labs available we move to the next slide the eighth parameter so in the eighth parameter material consumption so because we are using larger equipment in a traditional lab so obviously the consumables which are being used are uh, going to cost high the consumption is going to be very high and therefore the cost will be high in our case just to give you a flavor uh, if in a regular lab you are using a 100 ml test tube in our case we use a 10 ml test tube in your case if you are using a 50 ml chemical we use 5 ml chemical result is same effectiveness is same so students learn the same concept however we use only 5 ml chemical so therefore the wastage is less cost is less it is more environment friend friendly also so we are also trying to fulfill the green initiative uh, of the society material collation to collate all the material assimilate in the lab lab assistant is needed and high time is needed it is a tedious process whereas in our case no such help is required teacher can use the teacher's table and in 5 minutes time she can demonstrate the concepts in the lab in a traditional lab normally we find that many a times no educational standards are implemented uh, whereas in our case we have follow st stringent educational concepts and there are a lot of standards which are implemented implemented for uh, designing activities etc orientation session for teachers is not available in a traditional lab video guides and lab manuals are not available whereas in our case both the orientation training session lab manuals video guides everything is available so that's about our comparative analysis of traditional lab versus a lab from nischal smart learning solutions we
move to the next one next slide so that's this slide broadly depicts the journey of our portable micro scale labs in india this is data for private schools we have implemented our labs in more than 1000 private schools we have trained more than 4000 teachers pan india and we have helped more than 1 million students to learn through these labs uh, this data is only for private schools if i talk about government schools added in this data we have touched upon more than 2 lakh schools 200000 schools across india for implementing our educational solutions in the last 12 to 15 years time uh, just for your knowledge there are more than 15 lakh schools in india out of 15 lakh nischal solutions are being used or have been implemented at some point in time in more than 2 lakh schools so that's the coverage that we do we move to the next slide now this is our second solution which is called a learning by doing center so the snapshots uh, we can go to the previous slide shivika yeah that's right so learning by doing center this is a center where we have uh, the requirements of a school being fulfilled who want to set up a lab in a traditional room so learning by doing center amalgamates it incorporates all the four labs math lab physics lab chemistry lab biology lab in one single room so all the equipment we guide the school on how to lay out the entire four labs their equipment etc in one single room in addition to that we also provide some more advanced labs for example robotic material constellation etc so those are also provided so it is not only the portable labs but some additional material is also provided for advanced learning for the students so that's called a learning by doing center however this requires a physical room to be set up we can move to the next slide now this is the third program from the nischels portfolio it's called the nischels excellence program this program is aimed at improving and building a very strong foundation for children in maths and science so four subjects maths physics chemistry biology classes 6 to class 10 and i'm very happy to say that from next year onwards class 11th and 12th curriculum will also be rolled out till this year we were focusing only on 6 to 10th uh, we integrate the curriculum of cbse state board ib board and uh, we also integrate a curriculum so that children will be prepared in maths and science for appearing for competitive exams like iit je neat in fact any examination which requires maths and science as a subject students will be well prepared to compete in those exams even examinations like bank probationary officer examination or the uh, gmat or the mba entrance exam etc and uh, this curriculum uh, a set of eight books is provided to each student so for example if i'm a student of class seventh i will be getting eight books two for each subject two mathematics two physics chemistry and biology each one is a main textbook and second is a question bank and the syllabus the curriculum is aligned to your board so for example if it's a cbse board school we align the curriculum to cbse board if it is ics or state board we align it accordingly uh, it is powered by augmented reality so i'll talk about this augmented reality we give digital content as part of this uh, curriculum and this content is not static content it is not just videos it is not just audio content it is not just photographs it is augmented reality 3d interactive content and i'll explain in the next slide what this means in addition to these books and augmented reality content we also conduct live classes so the curriculum has two levels school curriculum will be covered by the school teachers and we do orientation program for the teachers on how they have to use our curriculum our books etc to cover the school syllabus class syllabus and the additional part required from the point of view of competitive examinations for building a strong foundation in maths and science that advanced part is covered by nischal faculty so our teachers will be teaching for two periods in a day every day all five days of the week monday to friday and Saturday is kept for revision, Sunday is kept for test. As part of the program, homeworks, etc., can be assigned through our app. We will be providing two apps. One is an augmented reality app, and second is a learning app. So through the learning app, teachers can provide homework, etc., to the students, and students can 
complete this home assignment, etc., using the app at home through their mobile phone or through their parents' mobile phone. And on every Sunday, we do a test. The test is live throughout the Sunday from morning till midnight. Anytime the student wants, he can log in and he can appear in the test through the app itself. We'll move to the next slide, uh, Shivika. So this is the digital content. Content. So if you see this 3D interactive digital content, so the first picture on the left hand side, this is a tablet. So this content is uh, uh, compatible to Android phones. So any Android device like a mobile phone or a tablet, the content can be accessed through that device, Android device. And uh, you can see in the photograph, a teacher is using the uh, tablet, Android tablet to scan images from the book. So in the book, there will be approximately in each book, there will be about 100 to 125 images, which will have a cell phone symbol, diagrams, photographs, images, etc. With a cell phone symbol, this can be scanned using the Nischel Augmented Reality app. And this content will become live on the phone. So this photograph that you are seeing is for circulatory system. You are seeing a human heart. So when you scan this diagram from the book, this human heart will it will become live on your phone or on your tablet. You can actually see the heart pumping blood and the red color blood flowing through the arteries, going to the various organs and then coming back through the veins, impure blood, deoxygenated blood coming back for purification. All this can be seen live. So it will be in the form of a, a 3D interactive content and students can do simulation activities and they can learn by doing activities in this content. So it's not like a traditional smart class content. It is very different from a smart class content. Uh, this also includes a quiz. So after the content has been uh, learned by the student, teacher has taken the classroom session, then student will do the quiz through the app itself. And at the moment the student uh, submits the quiz, multiple choice type questions and answers, the, the student will get his uh, result how many questions he has answered correctly, if the answer is wrong, why it is wrong, and what is the right answer, all that can be obtained. So, so student can appear in the test n number of time till the time he reaches perfection. So that's broadly about the uh, digital con content. And anytime if you want uh, a demo of, of all these products and solutions, you can connect with Vartana and we can coordinate to give a online demo or a physical demo at your school as, as the case may be. We move to the next slide. So this was the third program. First was Microscale Portable Labs. Second was the uh, uh, Learning by, by Doing Centers. Third is Nischel's Excellence Program. And now we come to the fourth program, which is Nischel's partnering, School Partnering Program. We'll move to the next slide. This has two programs, basically. One is an Abacus program, and second is a Vedic Maths or Speed Maths program. Uh, Abacus program is generally meant for students from uh, age group four onwards, generally class one to five. There are six levels, level one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, as part of the program, we train the teachers of the school, maths teachers of the school, and then teachers can be certified by initials. We train and certify the teachers. Once certified, teachers can teach the program to the students. Uh, for the students, we provide a Abacus tool, a Abacus tool for practicing as well as an Abacus work workbook in each level and for the teacher to demonstrate in the class we provide a master abacus tool which is a very big tool for the teacher to demonstrate in the classroom uh, students who qualify the program will also be awarded certificates by initials so this program is meant for class one to five having six levels and it takes about three months time if you devote one period a week so if a school devotes let's say one period on a saturday or on a friday it will take about 12 sessions 12 periods to complete the program, 13th period for a revision and 14th period for a test and certification program. Similarly, Vedic Maths or Speed Maths is a program for classes 6 to 10, age group 10 onwards, and this has five levels. Uh, so Vedic Maths is something which, uh, in which Nishal is very, very highly proficient, and uh, we have incorporated his uh, ability into developing this curriculum. So there are five levels, level one up to level five. In each level, again, we train the mathematics teachers of the school and we certify the teachers so that they can teach in turn to the students. Uh, every student is provided a book in each level and this book is used for learning the Vedic maths concepts. At the end of the program, we certify the students by conducting an examination similar to abacus program this program is also for 12 sessions so if you devote one period a week it will get over in about three to four months time 12 theory sessions teaching sessions 13th period for revision and 14th period for the test so that's broadly about the school partnering program there is one more 
another solution which I am not covering here just now, which is the English language lab. This English language lab is meant for classes one to five. So that is something which we have not covered in today's session. I hope you have been able to understand the session and I'll be very happy to take question and answer at the appropriate time. I'll hand over back to Shivika. Shivika, over to you for customer so stories and experience. How Nishal Lab as well as the Excellence Program caters the technology integration and experience learning. Uh, so uh, we have called one of the customer to share the customer story. Mr. Ashish Shrunwal, uh, Executive Director uh, of Santosh uh, Adarsh Vidya Mandir School. Uh, he's from uh, Rajasthan. Uh, sir, I'm unmuting you from my end. Uh, thank you. Uh, I request uh, you to unmute yourself and uh, share your experience. Hello, am I audible? Uh, yes, Ashish sir, I'm audible. Okay. Thank, thank you very much. And thank you very much for this opportunity for inviting me here. I want to tell you that we have two years ago. Today is a little break. You will try to keep the phone distance. Okay. मैं ये बताना चाहूँगा कि हम पिछले दो साल से निश्चल्स के साथ जुड़े गए हैं और हमने इनके यहाँ से चार प्रोडक्ट अभी इंप्लीमेंट किए हैं अपने स्कूल में डेट इस अबेकस वैदिक मैथमेटिक्स लैब्स एंड एक्सेलेंस प्रोग्राम एंड इस वजह से जो रिजल्ट में इंप्रूवमेंट हुआ है वो प्रेमेंडेस है मतलब मैं � in the last summer vacations, we went to a parent's house where one child was in the 7th class and one child was in the 11th class. So, he was from biology, science. He is studying in science biology. I had to ask some concept about the heart. So, we were sitting in both sides. So, that 11th class student couldn't answer that question, but that 7th class girl answered. Because she learned that concept from natural classes. Uh, that augmented reality, Mr. Anurag Dixit was talking about, that is tremendous. Like, you will feel like that heart is in front of you and how it is working. Every single thing you can see there, how the actual the heart, how, how the heart works. So basically, it will completely clear out the all the concept. Or I don't think there is any problem in any uh, student's mind after that and uh, what uh, what our students got after that like uh, their calculation speed is increased they are doing very very good very very good after that uh, vedic mathematics and abacus like uh, the um, student of class third and fourth are doing cal uh, calculations of millions in in just few seconds and over their hands only so just to calculate and uh, uh, speak up their answers. So it was great idea. And we are still doing uh, with initials. And we hope that we can do it better than we can do it. As many things that the initials have made for us, we have made all the things that we have made for us. We can do it better than 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 we can do it better. The augmented reality technique is now मेरे ख्याल से किसी और कंपनी ने इसको इंट्रोड्यूस नहीं किया है, सो ऑल थैंक्स टू निशल्स एंड देयर टीम कि उन्होंने ये प्रोडक्ट बनाया और हमको एक इतना रिमोट एरिया में राजस्थान में हम तक इस चीज को पहुंचाया कि हम बच्चों को ये सारी टेक्निक से पढ़ा सकें। आई गेस राजस्थान में अभी कोई स्कूल बच्चों तक अपने इस प्रोडक्ट को पहुंचाया है। So thank you very much, Nishals, Team Nishals for this, and that's all from my side. Thank you, thank you, sir, for sharing your experience of using Nishal Lab. So moving on, I'll just talk about the summary and then we'll take the question if you have any. So in today's webinar, we have covered like traditional versus modern classroom 21st century and with a focus on holistic development. Some strategies to promote holistic developments are integrating experiential learning, doing self-guided studies, collaboration and technology integration, lesson integration for better learning outcomes. 
we also talked about uh, lab and how it plays a crucial role in con conceptualizing uh, ideas practical uh, uh, involvement using advanced equipment and it also make, uh, it's also making teaching effortless uh, followed by uh, initial slab and how initial slab is offering a holistic learning uh, solutions for school development and enabling to, uh, schools to integrate experiential learning as well as combining the technology uh, through uh, portable labs and portable learning resources along with the training. Uh, so that's uh, about today's webinar. If you have any question, you can put it in Q&A section. Uh, Anurag sir, we have a question uh, in the uh, Q&A uh, box. I'll just read that for you. Sorry, somehow I'm not able to see it. I think someone asked about uh, the training. Uh, yes, I think uh, Durga Srivastav has uh, asked a question about the availability of one or more equipment as a requirement after training the program. So uh, I am not sure exactly what Durga wants to ask. However, whatever I could understand from the question, yes, all the equipment will be available at the school level as part of the labs. And uh, in case, I think if your question is in case if any equipment uh, is non-functional or is uh, not working, yes, we do have equipment which is under warranty. It will be covered. It will be repaired or replaced. And some of the consumable items are items which have to be replenished year on year. For example, uh, with the labs, if we supply you chemicals for one academic year, at the end of the academic year or at the beginning of the next academic year, these chemicals, because they have got consumed, they have got exhausted, they'll have to be replaced. In case if you want to ask anything else, please feel free. Also, sir, I think the question is also to know that whether the teacher training is included in the uh, solution you're offering. I, I didn't follow you, Shivika. Whether the teaching... Teacher training is included in the uh, initial no, no. lab solution. In the teacher training, first time teacher training, like I had mentioned during my presentation, we do it at the school level. It is a physical training at the school after this every quarter we have a refresher training which is normally done online and for a period of three years we support so three years means it will be approximately 12 quarters so first time is at the school the remaining 11 quarters it will be online refresher training which will be given to the teachers thank you sir uh, if anyone wants to ask any other question please go ahead raise your hand or you can also put it in q a section uh, I have one question here for myself. Uh, we'll be, I'll be circulating the feedback form uh, in the Q&A section. Please stay tuned to that. You'll also receive a mail. Uh, there's another question. Is, uh, is it compulsory or mandatory to set up a laboratory in a single school from nursery? So, see, actually, uh, setting up lab labs, specifically if it's a CBSE board school, or uh, international board school laboratories are mandatory now there are two ways you can set up <clears throat> laboratories either you can set up a traditional lab or you can set up the initial lab even if you have set up the traditional lab we would strongly recommend that you take initial lab in addition to a traditional lab because our labs are going to co complement your traditional lab we do not claim that our labs can replace your traditional lab traditional lab has its own merits it has its own advantages and from a few boards from the uh, uh, school board that you are affiliated to it may be mandatory to set up lab as per the guidelines prescribed by that board so we will not claim that you can replace the guidelines of that board by initial lab but taking initial lab will only help you and your students and teachers to improve the effectiveness of the teaching learning process because our lab's equipment will be much more effectively teaching the students. So that is what I can say. So it's a very good idea to take these labs because they are highly economical. They can come inside the classroom. Uh, also, adding to this, sir, I think maybe the person is also trying to know that if, uh, as a school, I have bought uh, one lab, but I have multiple schools, more than one school. So do I need to use that lab only in one school or I can utilize it? In, uh, <laughs> okay, topics? wonderful. I, very good question. Very good question. So I would strongly say that one lab is meant for one school. 
however if both the schools are close by and you want to because the labs are portable and you have maybe a vehicle available all the time at the school and you want to transport the lab from one school premises to another or from one building to another building and you think you can manage it absolutely no problem from our side however if you really ask my opinion one lab should be dedicated to one school in fact i would say if it is a very large school for example let's say a school having 4000 students 5000 students in that case you may require multiple labs of nischel because you will have probably six or seven or eight sections each section having some 30 40 students so one lab equipment may not suffice because in timetabling you may have two teachers teaching the same concept in the same period now with one lab you will get only one set of item so for example just to give you an idea if electromagnetism is being taught in physics in class 8 in period number 2 on tuesday and two teachers are teaching in period number 2 in two different sections say in section a and in section c so obviously you will need two equipment however if you can structure the time tabling in such a way that there is no overlap there is no simultaneous period even with one lab you can do it thank you sir uh, uh, we don't have any uh, more questions for now if you have any question please put it in q and a section uh, by the time uh, we'll uh, move to the next slide so if uh, you are interested in taking any of the program which we have discussed or you want have, uh, to know anything or you have any query please reach out to us on the email id hello@vartana.com and this is our contact number